So we were right here at the Computex 2018, and a couple of days ago you announced uh, A76 and G76 mm -hmm. and V76. So now everything is 76. This is true. We actually have a premium IP suite that is fully aligned. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I think in the launch, and you've seen some of the information, we're delivering laptop class performance uh, with the, the Cortex A76, really developing um, you know, high fidelity gaming or actually cross-platform gaming level support with the Mali G76 and the first uh, 8K capable video processor in the V76. We put it all together uh, along with the other key components that truly provides a, a much bigger uh, platform for the next generation. If you merge in what we're doing with the project Trillium for acceleration for machine learning, uh, all of the key components do better machine learning on their own independently, but also as a combination of all of the above. So I'm really happy that you're calling it the laptop class performance because mm -hmm. I've been using ARM laptops for the last five years, right? But they've been mostly Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. And is it true to say that there hasn't been such a huge push? Like you've been always talking about it, right? But now are you pushing it even more? So it's a consistent move, as you probably see from uh, some of the uh, collateral that we've generated. Uh, the trajectory that we have on performance has been going very strongly up and to the right. Uh, but what the A76 represents is really a, a much bigger step, as you point out. Over 35% over the last generation of product, like the A75, but also nearly two times uh, when you consider the actual delivered performance um, versus today's maybe A73 class products that you see. So two times faster than the, the ARM laptops that are there right now, mm -hmm. that are being talked about and shown off and stuff. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big jump. You're talking about, uh, it's like a Intel Core i5, is it? So yeah, we believe that especially for the mobile connected laptop, um, the sweet spot for us is versus the Cortex uh, Core M3, uh, i3, i5 class devices. Uh, and certainly the A76 has the capability to compete quite well with them while being substantially uh, more power efficient. Because uh, ARM processors have always been designed mobile first a little bit right now. Is it going to be a little bit more laptop first kind of? Uh, is a single thread performance like, are you focusing more on that or not necessarily? So we are uh, talking about single thread performance. It'll still be big little performance overall. But uh, uh, we are looking at this device still to go into premium uh, smartphones. So effectively, uh, while we will have that kind of performance available, it is still looking at a smartphone form factor when it comes to uh, power efficiency. Some of the most awesome smartphones that I see have this PC mode we connect into an external display and it has this uh, PC UI and stuff. Hopefully this becomes more and more of a push also. How much is ARM doing into that field? So our focus has been enabling the level of performance and working with the ecosystem uh, and make developers more capable of optimizing to ARM platforms. Uh, the final delivery of those types of devices naturally comes from our customers, our partners, and their, their customers. But we are actively trying to help in every way we can to make the ecosystem uh, much more capable of delivering uh, optimized solutions for these devices. Maybe uh, through Lenaro and all this open source Linux uh, optimizations for the ARM, because uh, this, th there was this target to get 25% of all servers in 2020. Are, are you going to reach this? So, quite a big shift, mister, Sorry, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, I'll talk through it anyway. Uh, certainly, Lenaro is a platform for us to deliver better uh, open source solutions that can go into mobile markets, consumer markets, and infrastructure markets. Uh, but we're also working with uh, um, you know, gaming developers. Uh, we're working on actual optimized libraries, such as the ARM Compute libraries. We're looking at uh, ARM's uh, NN framework that, uh, or uh, uh, platform that fits into uh, frameworks like Android NN and uh, Cafe. So we're doing a lot to actually enable outside of Linaro as well. The second question you had was about servers uh, and how ARM could get to 25%. Now that is something that ARM is still working with our ecosystem to enable. 
and we see a lot of traction potentially on the cloud side for it. Because I was mentioning the server and that target of 25, is there any target that you might have for the laptop market? Um, so we, we do want to get to um, about 90% of all mobile devices, which would in, in mean that we want to get a, a, a larger percentage of clamshell devices. In this case, uh, we'd say it'd be north of 20% of clamshell devices by 2021, 2022. That's cool. Uh, how about uh, uh, the A76? Uh, how is it a different architecture compared to the A75? It's like a, it's been thought of a different in a different way. It is. It is a, a ground-up new microarchitecture, uh, and the approach that ARM has taken is to build microarchitectures and step them through, and have a parallel team go to maybe two generations out and build the next big step. So it does rethink a lot of what the microarchitecture is. Uh, naturally, if we, in microarchitecture terms, there's a lot of effort into newer branch prediction techniques, uh, better prefetching techniques, uh, greater and wider out-of-order issue, uh, to name a few things that are different about the Cortex-A76 versus the prior generation A75. Is it already uh, uh, fixing uh, all this uh, security stuff that was uh, happening with the high end of, of ARM, and that's mostly Intel issues, right? But that's also affecting high end ARM. Is it already fixed in A76, or is, it can't be fixed that fast? Just to be clear, right, the Spectre and Meltdown issues that you refer to, there are multiple variants, and out of those variants, two are, especially variant one and variant four, are primarily software issues that need software diligence to fix, right? Uh, so you can't address all of those just through hardware. Uh, for variant two and variant three, uh, Cortex-A76 does not have any effect on uh, uh, variant three, or does not, variant three does not affect it, and we have uh, our fixes in place for variant two as well. So by the time these devices come to market, at least uh, the large volume ones, you should be um, uh, kind of resistant to, or have mitigations to variant two and three. And the fabs have been showing off that they have seven nanometers working. So this is gonna be a, a nice jump from 10 nanometers, right? So yes, there is a, a step up to uh, seven nanometer. Remember that ARM still delivers uh, synthesizable IP. So Cortex-A76 would still fit into 16 nanometer or 10 nanometer type devices. But seven is a sweet spot, especially when you consider a premium smartphone and uh, um, laptop or clamshell class devices. And we're quite excited uh, at what, as a combination of these two, the process technology and the processor, what kinds of devices are possible. Because for example, Qualcomm did a nice jump in their first and second generation 10 nanometers. Mm -hmm. uh, is it gonna be the same in seven nanometers or where there's potentially gonna be two different versions or something like that? So I can't comment on uh, what Qualcomm does for sure. So that's a question for them. But we certainly see the uh, broader ARM ecosystem being able to handle uh, seven nanometer and we will see exciting devices as a result.